um, Madame Stella Maurice. Madame Stella Maurice est la fiancée de Julian Assange ainsi que la mère de leurs deux enfants. Stella, I invite you to the microphone. Thank you very much. This. Can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, everyone, for, for being here, for making this possible uh, in the city that embodies the values that Julian defended and the values that are being attacked. Uh, with this prosecution and with his incarceration and, and persecution. Um, it's, it's the first time that I uh, see the statue. Uh, I've seen it in pictures before, but it's the first time I see it in, uh, in person. And it's also the first time I see Julian's likeness in three dimensions since the 6th of January. <clears throat> and I was doing some interviews there and the photographer asked me to get on the chair and also to get on the chair next to Julian. And so I climbed up um, quite precariously and kind of held on to Julian and I couldn't, couldn't avoid taking his hand. <laughs> and I have to say it was very lifelike. Julian hasn't seen his kids since October, when the prison went into lockdown. The last time I saw him was in court on the 6th of January, uh, when his bail was rejected. I don't tell the children that their father is in a prison. They have no concept for what a prison is. Because when I want to teach them what a prison is, I want to tell them that that is where criminals go where bad people go for doing bad things, not where good men go for doing good things. He's in a nine square meter box, sorry, a nine square meter metal box. Uh, he's been there for two and a half years, even though he won his case at the lowest court in January, he's still there and he's struggling We're in a situation now where the only two outcomes uh, that will happen is either Julian regains his freedom or he loses his life. And if he loses his life, it's not. It's not because he's suicidal, it's because they're killing him. I'm here to remind you that Julian isn't a name, he's not a symbol, he's a man, he's a human being, and he's suffering. He has children, he has a family. They're hiding him from view, they're silencing him, but he's alive. And it is a criminal aberration, a criminal aberration that he is in a prison cell in no sane world. Should Julian Assange be in a prison cell for revealing the state's crimes, concrete evidence of state crimes, the same state that is trying to extradite him and so far has kept him in some form of deprivation of liberty for a decade? I spoke to Julian the other day, we can speak at least, 
and I was in the supermarket and I was doing a checkout in this automatic checkout and he he asked me what is that because he hadn't seen the automatic checkout he hasn't been to a supermarket for 10 years and it's just an increasing uh, dehumanization putting him in ever worse conditions and how much can a human being take So I'm so grateful to the people of Geneva, to the press, to the city for calling for his freedom. Biden is coming to this city in a few days' time and everyone should tell him to stop this lunacy. It is an aberration that Julian is not a free man. In no sane world can this be normalized. That's all. Thank you. Sorry, just to say that this is a political case. The outcome is determined uh, by the political climate uh, that surrounds it. And, and the, legally, the case that has been taken has been taken extraterritorially against Julian. He's not a U.S. citizen. He wasn't in the United States. So it's um, applying its laws, its Espionage Act, its criminal laws, extraterritorially into the European space. Um, and I hope that this uh, call by the city of uh, Geneva, by the people, by the, by the press, and by politicians um, will also inspire other cities and that together um, other cities can also join forces uh, with what's done today. And uh, concretely, uh, we know from, from the U.S. diplomatic cables that when a president comes here or, or a senior diplomat, the U.S. Embassy prepares what they call a scene setter, a briefing for the president and the senior diplomats about what is happening to the place where they're going, what the contentious policies of the U.S. are, so they know what to expect. So I'm certain that the scene setter for Biden in 10 days' time will mention this, and that is really important. Thank you. Alors on va, on va prendre une question sur, sur Zoom par vidéoconférence. Je vous laisse de, de Russian TV, sauf erreur. Est-ce que c'est juste oui. Bonjour, merci de vous présenter vous brièvement. Bonjour, Myriam Laridi pour RT France. C'est une question à l'attention d'Antoine Veil et de Stella Maurice. Euh, Est-ce que nous avons une idée euh, précise ou plus ou moins précise de la date à laquelle aura lieu l'appel Et la deuxième question, euh, c'est euh, par rapport au jugement rendu par la juge Vanessa Barreitzer, qui n'arrangeait pas les affaires de la liberté de la presse, clairement, mais au, au niveau personnel pour Julian Assange, le fait qu'elle ait, euh, qu ait parlé, qu'elle ait, qu ait donné comme raison du refus de non-extradition euh, son état de santé. Est-ce que vous, vous pensez que c'est un bon signe pour l'appel C'est-à-dire que ce, ce, cet état de fait ne pourra pas être remis en cause lors de l'appel Est-ce qu'on est qu peut être optimiste pour l'appel Merci. C'était un peu difficile à comprendre, mais euh, euh, la première, votre première question, c'était quand est-ce que, si j'ai bien compris, quand est-ce que devrait, euh, la, la décision devrait intervenir sur l'appel qui est actuellement en cours et qui, qui, euh, qui a été interjeté par les Américains euh, Sorry, suite à la première décision. Are you, are you translating or is this yeah, I'm trying to repeat the question. Oh, okay. So, did you get the question? I, I think so. What, 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 when the, what's happening basically legally? Yeah, what's happening? When will there a decision being taken? First question. The, 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 And is the, the fact that um, the, the first decision of the British court was based on a... Uh, a health question and not on a, the legal question of the rights of Julian Assange. Is that what impact can this have on the second uh, decision coming? Um, the High Court has to yet grant permission for the US to be able to appeal. So we're actually in a kind of a, a waiting uh, position. Uh, and there's no set um, 
um, deadline for, for the High Court to, to decide. Um, but in any case, uh, the court could, could say that it rejects hearing the U.S. Uh, appeal, in which case um, Julian would be set free, um, and then he has to find a safe place to be. And if that's not the case, and this goes to appeal, then we're talking about uh, more hearings, probably in the autumn or even in the new year, and Julian, uh, Julian remaining in prison. And the longer he's in prison, uh, the higher the likelihood that, that he loses his life. So regardless of, of the outcome of the High Court's decision uh, at this stage, it is urgent and uh, imperative that, uh, that there is a mobilization that uh, everyone do whatever they can uh, within their network, within their position, within their power, uh, to try to get Julian to safety as soon as possible. Thank you very much.